The break room was where all the guards all came to unwind after work, obviously. A few of the guards laughed and chatted, telling stories. Rudan Stamantius was currently talking about the time she smashed in her aunt's killer's teeth. And then I just stomped, like... She mimes stomping, complete with a crunching noise. And the guy doesn't even make any noise as they all drag him off to the hospital. As the guards all laughed and chatted, Robot Hands, aka Shay Shay Harren, Shay to her friends, tended to her cybernetic hands, sadly. She'd been born to the wealthy but not quite noble Harren family on Nestis. If Shul was the centre of the Imperium, then Nestis was the cultural centre. It was famous for his art, music and cities that dipped under the water. And the city of Serrano was one of the most spiritual in the Imperium. Nestis did, however, have a dark side. There was a tiny, 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 but definitely non-zero part of Nestis' religious community who believed cybernetics and cloned organs destroyed the soul. Shay's parents were such people. All seven of her mothers, dad, everybody. When they have found out what happened, they've written her a message letting her know she was out of the family. They wouldn't be associated with such an abomination. What would the men at the temple think? Or the gossipers? Oh, and don't bother going to Auntie Hylene for help. She disappeared in the middle of the night. Shay had nothing. Nothing but beating the ass of the man who had deprived her of her future. And yet... Shay Shay Harren had felt nothing but rage for the longest time. But after some thought, rage gave way to... Kinship? In a way, Shay felt like they were two of a kind. She pulled his files. He was studying to be a teacher. No fucking chance of that now. Red as Maryland and Pennsylvania were. There was talk of closing down schools and other social services in the region, along with factories producing firearms, explosive substances, things that could be made into explosives. She thought it was a terrible idea. People who've lost their jobs and tend to be angry at whoever took their job. The Shilvanti had deprived Thomas Steinberg of his future long ago. In a weird sort of way, losing her hands now made them even. And yet... The guards here insisted on taking so much more from him. His future wasn't enough. They'd taken his face, his jaw, his teeth. And now there was talk of ending his story for good. In the meantime, Rudan was finishing up her story. I think it's time for me to avenge my aunt. Oh shit. That wasn't good. Shay Shay Harin knew just what she had to do. I was chilling in my cell when I got the news. Jeff walked in with an urgent look. I learned more about him in my time here. In a straight fight he was useless, but Jeff had made himself so useful to the other inmates that hurting him was unthinkable. He was the kind old elf who fixed the children's toys, except toys meant pruno stills and information. And the information he just bought me was a doozy. Apparently someone had left a present for me in the loose tiles in the hall. I knew the place, and I passed by there on the way to the showers. I had no way of hiding it when I was in there. There were way too many guards who insisted on keeping watch and apprehending unruly prisoners, the horny cunts. Anyways, I went off to the shower, flipping the double deuces to the guard who really seemed to enjoy watching me get undressed. Watch it, Steinberg, she growled. What you gonna do, bitch? Smash my teeth in? I clapped my teeth together for added emphasis. My lower jaw and teeth assembly were a solid piece of metal, some alien concoction hard as titanium but far lighter. Dr. Mortis had gone above and beyond procuring it for me, so I was looking for a favour to do him. She just rolled her eyes as I went and had my shower. At least the water was warm today. Half the time it was stone cold. I had just grabbed the soap when I heard a commotion. A few of the Shilvanti guards had made their way into the shower room and pulled someone down on the floor. Only an idiot wouldn't know what they had in mind. I was safe. Apparently I was too ugly for them, thank God. I looked around. I was the only other one in here. For fuck's sake, I groaned as I walked over. Hey! One of the perps looked up. Wanna join in? I'm in the mood for something weird today. Get off him. The would-be rapist looked at me. Mind your damn business. I'm making it my damn business. I gave the 300 pound eggplant a shove. Big and heavy as they were, they could still be thrown off balance easy. High center of gravity or some shit. This particular one landed on her ass, sliding on the wet floor. I see you coming around here again, you go home piece by piece, got it? The show left, muttering something about the sex planet. You good? I helped the scrawny guy up. After months in prison, I had learned that doing shit like this in my bare ass was only awkward, if I made it awkward. Yeah, 
Thanks, man. I owe you one. And the guy went and started his own shower, and I went back to mine. Of course, by now, the warm water had run out, and I shivered my way through the rest of the shower. Once I finished up, I got dressed again, and went to the aforementioned tile on my way back, pulling it loose. I'd almost had a heart attack. Inside was a stun stick, and the note with the sloppy handwriting of Shilvanti, trying to write in English. It read, Rudan equals danger. Huh. If I remember correctly, Rudan Stamantius was the second, third, maybe fourth cousin of Tetris Stamantios. More importantly, she was the head guard here. Did I mention I had killed her cousin's wife? Yeah. No wonder Rudan had a hate on for me. So now I had to hide the stun stick for when I needed it, and I had an idea. The walls were mostly solid, but they had hollow spaces for wires and pipes and stuff. Jeff and I had accidentally bought into one while on work detail and probably covered it up. Nobody knew it was there but us. I just ran to the corner, sliding the stick into the hole as I went, making sure it lodged somewhere I could reach. That would be good for next time. I had learned the schedule of guards watching our particular detail from a very reliable source, aka Jeff, I knew Rudan was scheduled to watch us while we repaired the wall. An evil, dastardly plan began to form in my noggin. By the time our next work detail rolled around about a week later, the plan had cemented safely in my head. It wasn't enough, to me, to kill Rudan. She had taken my jaw after all. I'll admit I got a lot of satisfaction from this, but I had decided that Rudan's Tamantius had to disappear without a trace. Once we started work, it would be a simple matter to get the stick. One of the tools we used was a set of large pins, roughly the size and shape of the stun button. They would be inserted into holes drilled into the wall to hold the temporary cover in place. I reached in and pulled my stick out, throwing it into my box of pins. Then, I waited for the signal. Jeff had spent a few of his favours helping me out. In this case, an inmate accidentally smeared grease on the cameras, blinding them. Oh, mother shit, fuck, he snapped. God fucking damn it. That was the signal. I grabbed the stun button and jabbed it against Rudan Stamantius' side. She flopped to the floor as all her muscles seized up. Another inmate immediately tied her hands and feet. Help me with this. I grabbed her by the shoulders as another inmate grabbed her feet. We stuffed her into the space in the wall and, well, we just got back to work. W what What are you doing? She stammered as she slowly regained control. By now, the edge of the wall was knee high. I jabbed her again as we continued the construction. After a while, she started talking again. When everyone finds out what you did, you're going to wish we killed you. I jabbed her again. The next time she piped up, the wall was chest high. Help! She yelled before I jabbed her once again. That was bad. If somebody had heard that, we had to work fast. By the time the last few bits of wall were ready to be put in, all we heard was muffled crying. I didn't even have it in my heart to jab her again. Please... She sobbed, as we slid the last section into place, just before more guards rounded the corner. We had someone yelling, one said. I don't know anything about that, one of the prisoners said. We're just working. Yeah, I added. Check the next hall over, I hate to think someone got hurt. Hope you find whoever it was. Yeah, yeah. We're watching you, Steinberg. Steinberg, I yelled, as the guards left. Anyone have any amontillado? Someone asked. I didn't say anything. I wasn't in the mood for jokes. We had just buried someone alive. From what I understood, her little gang of prisoners would be in complete disarray. It would be a few more days yet until I saw any consequences of my actions. In this case, it was a prisoner from another cell block rapping on my bars as I did some push-ups. What is it? If I sounded sweaty and tired, it was because I was. I'd grown a bit of a habit of nervous exercise. Apparently, lately, I've been compulsively exercising when I was nervous. Mr. Duchamp wants to see you. And the artist? I still hadn't looked up. Yes, he wants to discuss why this is not a pipe. No, not the artist, dumbass. If this guy thought himself important enough to send a messenger rather than come myself, I figured I'd better go see what he wanted. Shay Shay Harin suppressed a satisfied smirk as the news came in. Rudan Stamantios had mysteriously vanished. Shay never really liked Rudan. She thought the noble liked to lord it over people too much. Not that Shay thought that was a bad thing in and of itself or anything. She couldn't say she wouldn't have done it either, but Rudan Stamantios took it to unpleasant levels. Whatever. She'd heard rumours of an insurrection among the general population, and, well, she was feeling for them. Most of these people had damn good reasons to do what they did, or else they'd been, essentially, 
What was the human term? Political prisoners. Yeah, that. They were that. The point was, if there was something happening, Shay Shay Harin, aka Shay, aka Robot Hands, would help them out. It wasn't like she could return home to Nestis, could she?